Deep Showering Bombshell. These are the what three words you'll need to find your way to RSPB Minsmere in Suffolk on the east coast of England. Minsmere has a wide range of diverse and sometimes rare wildlife. This is due to its rich and varied landscapes and habitats found on the reserve. In the video I released last November, I spent the sunrise and sunset watching the red deer rutting, but the majority of that day was spent wandering Minsmere Reserve. Let me show you some of the wildlife I saw. A common sight in many ponds, lakes and streams, these are moorhens. They are a widespread and familiar wetland bird, but they can also be found in urban areas. It is distinguished by its red and yellow bill, its jerky swimming and constantly flicking tail. There are over 200,000 breeding pairs in the UK, but during autumn and winter these numbers are boosted by influxes of birds from mainland Europe. The stone chat is a small and compact bird, about the size of a robin. Found on heathland and boggy habitats, it can be frequently seen sitting on the top of bushes, flicking its wings and announcing its presence with harsh, agitated calls. It can be found throughout the UK but will often migrate to coastal areas like Minsmere during the winter. In areas like this, Darford warblers can often be seen following stone chats around. It's speculated that the Darford Warbler likes to catch the small insects that the larger stone chat disturbs. While I can't confirm this behaviour, I can at least confirm the two species are found together as a Darford Warbler made an appearance in this bush that the stone chats were perching on. This may not be the greatest footage ever committed to video, but this little bird attracted quite the crowd of onlookers as they are a relatively rare bird. Its population crashed during the 1960s with only 10 breeding pairs remaining. Today the population is much healthier, sitting around 3,200, although it is still regarded as an amber list species. It only eats insects and does not migrate during winter, and this means it's vulnerable to cold weather and prolonged snow cover. Well, this bird is much more accommodating to the amateur filmmakers and is happy to wade through the shallows in full view of my camera. It's a rough, and although it's much easier to see than the Darford Warbler, it is actually even rarer. The rough breeds in relatively few lowland sites in the UK and is more likely a migrant, but some birds are present all year round. Many birds visit the UK in late summer coming from Scandinavia before migrating to Africa. Only 13 females are known to breed in the UK, and only around 920 birds stay over winter. The bird gets its name from the ruff of brightly coloured feathers around the neck of the males, which is used in a showy display to attract a mate. This bird is in its winter non-breeding plumage. Females are much smaller than the males, but since this bird is on its own, it would take a more experienced birder than me to tell. Perhaps the experts watching could let me know in the comment section. As well as waders, Minsmere has its fair share of ducks, like these widgeon. The males are beautifully coloured, with a chestnut head and neck and a yellow patch on the forehead. Around 200 pairs will breed in central and northern Scotland, as well as northern England. But widgeon from Iceland, Scandinavia and Russia will visit all over the UK during winter, with around 450,000 birds spending the season here. The teal is another duck species on display today. When they lift their heads out of the water, you'll see the male's distinctive green eye patches. Similar to the widgeon, they are a winter migrant, with a small number of pairs breeding in the north. The migrants visit UK from the Baltic and Siberia. The teal is actually the smallest duck found in the UK, with a wingspan of around 61 centimetres and weighing around 330 grams. This next bird was one of my highlights of the day. It's only the second time I've ever seen one, and the first time I've managed to get one on camera. No, not the swan, but the kingfisher behind it. These are unmistakable birds, small yet brightly coloured in blue and orange. Perching on a reed, it dives into the water to hunt for fish, although this one doesn't seem to be trying too hard. It was still wonderful to watch. They are vulnerable to harsh winters and habitat loss and are amber listed. In the UK, there are between 3,800 and 6,400 breeding pairs. The kingfisher has healthy populations in the south of England, but they become rarer further north and are absent from northern Scotland. This next bird, testing my control of my camera, is a marsh harrier. 
It is the largest of the harriers and can be recognised by its long tail and wings held in the shallow V. There are around 400 breeding pairs in the UK and they are mainly found in eastern and southeast England, but with some populations further north too. In the early 19th century they were abundant in Norfolk and throughout East Anglia, however by the latter part of the century they had become extinct in the UK through habitat loss and persecution. Marsh harriers bred sporadically in the broads and occasionally at other sites from 1927 to 1975. Since then the numbers of nests in the county has risen steadily. Many marsh harriers will migrate to Africa for the winter after breeding here in the summer, but the number of overwintering birds is increasing. This bird is obviously not too welcome as several other birds seem to be attempting to drive it off. This group of large blackbirds is made up of cormorants. These may be a widespread and common bird now, but it wasn't always so. Cormorants are diving birds that feed on large amounts of fish in coastal waters. As such, they frequently came into conflict with fishermen, and the cormorant was nearly hunted to extinction in the 1970s. Well, thanks to conservation efforts, their numbers have increased. Cormorants dive to depths of about 5.8 metres and catches fish with its hook tip bill by swimming underwater. The dives typically last for just under 30 seconds. It's believed that the cormorant's hearing has evolved to be effective underwater, possibly aiding them in detecting prey, but this means their hearing isn't as good above water. The amount of fish that these birds eat depends on the temperature of the air and the water they hunt in. The colder it is, the larger amount of fish they eat. However, they do this by selecting larger fish, not by eating a greater quantity of fish. The cormorant can often be seen perched on the bank or rock, stretching its wings out. The feathers are not waterproof, so they do this to dry out. This pose gives them a sinister, almost reptilian look, and the evolutionary link to the dinosaurs is on full display. The last bird on offer for us today is a winter visitor to the UK. This is a great egret, once a rare visitor. It has become more common in the UK over the last few decades, and has even begun breeding here in low numbers, starting with a single nest in 2012. They will hunt fish, frogs and other small aquatic animals in salt and fresh water, standing still and allowing prey to come within striking distance, when it will spear it with its sharp bill. We were in for a real treat as we witnessed this particular great egret catch and swallow quite a large fish. A beautiful bird, they were almost wiped out in North America during the 1800s as they were hunted for their plumage which was used to decorate hats. Well that may be all the birds I have for you today, but there is one more creature I wish to show you before you go. This pretty little moth is a crimson speckled moth, also known as a crimson speckled flunky. This moth caused quite a stir with the visitors to Minsmere. It may be a common and widespread moth in Europe, but here in the UK it's a rare migrant. The Butterfly Conservation website has only 200 recorded sightings in the last century. That bright coloration is a warning sign to potential predators that they are toxic and birds will find them unpalatable. Well, that's all I have for you today. I came away from Minsme having seen some incredibly lucky and rare sights. Hopefully this will continue for my wildlife adventures coming up in 2023. Well, thank you for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please do subscribe so you don't miss more videos like this one. If you like birds, why not check out this playlist of beautiful birds with more videos to be added throughout the year. And I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye.